I'm Jasmine and welcome to the Women Wealth Impact Podcast. Today we're going to talk about my favorite thing which is SMART planning. Now SMART we're using this as an acronym so just bear with me as I go through and show you how to SMART plan for your personal finances and real estate. So let's start. Let's start with the first thing which is really putting together what a SMART goal looks like. Right. In a recent masterclass, I went through on how this concept works for everything. Right. Um, it works for if you want to lose weight. It works for if you want to improve your finances, if you want to buy a house, if you want to invest in real estate, like all of the things it works for. But it only works if you actually do it and follow it through. So when you think about a SMART goal, you want to start with the first letter, which is S and making sure that it's specific. Being specific is really, really essential when you're goal setting. Think about it. Um, when you're setting specific goals, um, you have to figure out why they are important, why they are important to you, what it looks like in the whole scheme of things of being important for investing, and what it looks like as far as your uh, your your personal finances. A lot of times we feel like, well, we can't invest or we have, we don't have specific goals because we don't know what we specifically should be doing. And I'm here to tell you that you can have specific goals. You just need to get laser focused. The one thing about me is that when I set a goal, I only put 12 weeks on the goal. Think about it. If you give yourself a whole year, if you say, I want to purchase a house this year. First of all, if you're not putting a specific date on that, then it's probably not going to happen. And if you give yourself an entire year, you're going to be sitting at the beginning of the year all excited, working on it for a couple of weeks, and then stop, put it down, life will happen. Then you get to the end of the year and you're looking like, oops, I said I was going to do it by the end of the year and now I'm sitting here and I haven't gotten it done. So I prioritize my goals and put priorities in place and then I put strategies on those priorities. When you do that, you break those things down, it becomes a lot easier. Think about it. If you have to just say, I want to purchase a house and then I say to you, well, how are you going to do that? Then you might be like, oh, well, I don't really know how I'm going to do that. And then this is this whole thing back and forth, right? When you put on something that's specific um, and you really categorize and prioritize what you need to do, the strategies come out a lot easier. So if you have a specific goal or a priority, you can say, okay, I need to purchase a home. In order for me to purchase that home, I need to go ahead and come up with my down payment. How much do I need for a down payment? I need to go through and say, okay, where is my realtor? Where is the lender? Where is somebody to tell me what I specifically need for this investment? This is going to be essential to what you do when it comes to building a smart goal. Think about it. Now, um, being specific also means being laser focused on what you want to do. When you don't prioritize what you have getting done, then it's gonna, it's never going to work. It's not going to mesh together. So putting something specific, and we'll talk about making it time down in a little bit, but being specific on what needs to happen is going to be essential to your growth and making sure that you're actually writing it down. A lot of us don't want to write down our goals for whatever reason, but the reality is, is that once you write it down, it becomes real. When you just have a thought in your head or just something that you think you want to do, that's when it just becomes like, oh yeah, maybe I'll get around to it. But if you write it down, it's going to become specific and really help you get to the next level of what the thinking is or goes behind it of actually getting this done. So the next thing a part of a SMART goal is making sure that it's measurable, right? So a measurable goal just means that you can actually see something tangible. So something like purchasing a home is a tangible thing because once you're sitting there with your keys, it's something that actually happened. But when it's measurable, and even if you're um, measuring, uh, you know, the success of something, you have to be able to see and set the goal specifically of what you want to do. So we're using the home buying, but even think about losing weight or even increasing your credit score. If you have something measurable, like, hey, I want to get off all of the collection items on my credit report in order for me to feel like I have achieved this goal, I'll see zero collections, then that's going to be something that's measurable, something that really just makes sense. And it's not just like, oh yeah, I'm going to improve my credit or I need to fix my credit, right? I hate when people say to me, I need to fix my credit. And then I'm like, okay, well, how are you going to do it? And they're like, oh, well, yeah, I'm not really sure. 
you can be very specific and be very, um, uh, you know, have that priority. But if you don't have something that's measurable of how it will look, if it's actually a success, is going to be the detriment of the goal. The next thing you want to do is make sure that the goal is achievable, right? So I know that we have big dreams. Um, as Black women, we are multi-talented, we're multi-passionate. So we just we just know and believe that we can do anything. And I believe that as well. But when you don't have something that's achievable and you have something that's just like, uh, okay, girl, I don't know if I can really accomplish this, but I'm going to just put it on this vision board and pray that it happens. That is not really a good strategy. You want to make sure that it's achievable and not that you don't um, reach beyond what you are, where you're at now, but you want to make sure that it's within reason and within the grasp of what you actually have going on in your life. So if you say, I want to make a million dollars this year and you haven't made maybe a hundred thousand dollars, that may not be as achievable. Or if you don't have a really good strategy or plan that you can follow to actually get to the million dollars, it may not be that much so achievable. But if you're saying, you know what, I really want to just save a, an emergency fund of $10,000 this year and you have a plan in place, that makes it so much more achievable. And it's something that you can actually do without just stretching yourself so thin that it doesn't get done. So make sure that it's achievable. The next thing is making sure that it is relevant, right? So this is really important. When you are thinking about investing in real estate or setting any long-term goals, when it comes to goal setting, it has to be relevant. It has to be something that you can actually see, feel, touch, and it's relevant to the time that you're in. If you feel like investing in real estate or even purchasing your first home is in your grasp or something that you want to do, making it relevant to what you feel in your home in your heart is going to be very, very, very detrimental to it actually happen, happening. Remember, we want to measure our success with things that we actually can accomplish, not with pipe dreams and things that are just like so far-fetched that can't happen, right? I am never going to tell you that nothing can happen, but I'm also very, 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 very much so realistic to what I want and I set forth in my life. When I think about my goals, I'm thinking about things that are crystal clear that I know that I can hit and go ahead and even have stretch goals. But with those stretch goals, I am having the support, the coaching, the mentorship, something behind it to know that I can get to that next level. And that's how you need to measure yourself so that you can get to what, where you need to be. The last thing a part of the SMART goal concept is really making sure that it is time-bound, right? So time-bound goals are important. If you don't put a time on it, if you have 12 weeks, if you have six months, if you have a year, I don't recommend a year, but if you have, you know, some periods of time, when you put an actual date on it, it makes it more real. The closer you get to that date, the more you're going to push yourself harder to go ahead and actually achieve what you set out to do. If you don't have a time on it, then it's just something that you just put out there. Oh, I want my credit to improve. Well, where is that going to come from? What is the time? Is it six months? I don't even think that you should put like six months because we can always push that out. You want to pull out a calendar, actually pinpoint the date of when you're going to achieve that goal and write it out when you're putting out the format for the goal achievement. This is going to help you tremendously because now you're going to be able to say, you know what, I need to do this by September 4th, which is my birthday. Um, and because I'm setting that goal, it's going to get done. And I have this timestamp right here. This is going to help you tremendously with any type of goal setting. So when you think about the different types of goals that you need to achieve, um, real estate investing, of course, is something that I focus on because I empower women to do that. But think about other things. It could be weight loss. It could be, uh, like I said, financial improvement. It can be having better relationships with your spouse. It could be even helping your children dive more. But whatever it is, make sure that you're prioritizing yourself. A lot of us as women don't prioritize self-care. So then we're just always stuck in this forever, ever, you know, wheel of, oh my goodness, I just want to do so much more in my life, but I can't because of this and because of that. What I'm telling you that is that you can go ahead and get this thing done if you go ahead and prioritize yourself and your goals before anything else. So 
In conclusion, you want to make sure that you are setting those SMART goals on a continuous basis. Don't just do it at the beginning of the year. Don't just do it when you are um, at the middle of the year or when you're just about to think that you're spiraling out of control. Set those goals and make sure that you only set those goals and build the habit when you're ready. Right. So don't force yourself. A lot of us are competing. We have all of these things that we see on social media every single day. And we feel like we have to compete with a person on their day 100 and we're on our day zero. Don't feel that way. Feel like you can go through and get this done and very much so push yourself. But don't beat yourself up. Don't feel like, oh, my goodness, I'll never get this done. I want to, you know, have the yacht and all the things. And you can have those things, but we have to set the goal to actually um, get those things done and not feel like we have to get them all at once. I always tell my clients and my students that when it's time for you to get to where you're supposed to be, you will arrive. And I know that may sound a little kooky, but at the same time, you want to Make sure that when you're prioritizing yourself, that you don't have to feel like you have to get it all done at once. A lot of times when you have, um, you know, messed up finances or things like that, it didn't happen overnight. So that means that it's not going to take, you know, it's not going to take one day for you to fix your whole financial picture. You need to go through and take those steps and just gradually move into things. I promise you, you will feel a lot better and you'll get to the goal if you go through and just realize that you're here, you have support. Um, and you are able to achieve all the things that you need to with just a few steps. Thank you guys for listening, and I'll talk to you next week.